What do you do when you make a mistake? Do you ignore it? Do you try to move on quickly? Do you try to cover it up? You know, specifically in your Tai Chi, what happens, for example, if you lose your balance in pheasant stands? Do you tense up and then just keep going? You know, I want to suggest a different kind of approach and I want you to learn to embrace the mistake. I want you to pause when something happens, for example, losing your balance. I want you to analyze why did I just lose my balance? In my pheasant stance, for example, was my supporting leg locked? Is that why I lost my balance? Did I lose my balance coming out of snake creeps because my columns weren't intact and, and I really couldn't get my balance for pheasant stands? Do I struggle going backwards with repulse the monkey? Why is that? Am I not letting my Dantian lead the way? Am I leading with my shoulders or am I leaning back too far with my shoulders? Do I not step confidently and let that front leg empty so that I can step back again in my Repulse the Monkey? I want you to be purposeful in looking at why something not right happened as you're doing your Tai Chi. One of the ways to practice that that's kind of fun and what we're going to do today is we're going to play with incorrect movement. So let's take Pushing Chi for the first example. You know, Pushing Chi, if you bring your left foot forward and Think about doing your pushing chi as best as you can, where you actually lead from the Dantian, you're rooted and grounded. It's a soft, gentle motion. But let's play with it in an incorrect way. Instead of leading from the Dantian, let's lead from the shoulders and let's push and pull, and push, and pull. And it's obviously not relaxing, and it's obviously not the correct way to do pushing chi. If we think about our stance with pushing chi, you know, try pushing chi with one foot right in front of the other, and it's actually very unstable. Then go back to what you know about pushing chi. Settle yourself. Let your stance be nice and stable. Move from the Dantian. And when you've done a little playing with that incorrect movement, now you can recognize why it's so important to do it and apply the underlying principles because it does help your body relax. Same thing is true, let's try it with brush knee. If we hold the ball and we step out with brush knee left and we move from the Dantian, it, it's a good movement. If we play with it and make it, uh, we're not moving from the Dantian, if we reach and we extend with this lock, this arm, obviously columns are broken, that back heel is up. Right? We can't, this is not a good position to be in. But if you walk down the floor like this and try to do brush knee incorrectly, think of all the ways you could do brush knee incorrectly. And you're going to lose your balance like I just did. And you're going to feel it's, it doesn't feel good right? Now let's go back and do brush knee correctly. Holding that ball, 
stepping out, moving from the Dantian. Thinking about your substantial and insubstantial changes, having a wide enough stance. We didn't even work on that with our incorrect. We'll do that next with part the wild horse's mane. Keeping our shoulders in harmony with our hips, keeping our limbs in a rounded position. Nothing is locked. Let's do that part the wild horse's mane and let's try incorrect first. If we step out with a very narrow stance, I'm just move towards the camera here, step out with a very narrow stance, it's actually very hard to stay balanced. And I'm, I'm breaking my columns because that's the only way I can try to keep myself balanced. If I lock my arms and I overreach with part the wild horse's mane, and then do it the opposite, try to keep the arms really tight. Don't, don't reach out at all. Keep the arms nice and tight. Remember, there's a Goldilocks position for that part, the wild horse's mane. This is too broad, too tight, too uh, stiff. This is too tight and is very weak. There is an optimal extension for your arms as you do your part, the wild horse's mane. Now try to do it as correctly as you can. Try to find that Goldilocks position for your part, the wild horse's mane. Let's do that one more time. Holding that ball, step out, try to relax. Use the rotation to help your arms just open up. And that's another mistake that you might feel is you use your arms instead of your rotation to part the wild horse's mane. This is going to get very uh, tiring, whereas if you use your rotation to just open up, you can do part the wild horse's mane all day long. One more. Let's do uh, ward off. The ward off sequence starting, let's do it correctly first, holding that ball, stepping out and behind, ward off, grasp the bird's tail, roll back, rotate and press, pushing chi. Now let's think about ways we can play with an incorrect movement. If I don't step behind when I do my ward off, if I just step out to the side and I turn, look how narrow I am. Then play with how far back does it take for me to be in a stable stance. Play with the idea of keeping your columns intact with your ward off. If you ward off and then you grasp the bird's tail, you're obviously off balance. Your shoulders are not in harmony with your hips. Your columns are off. You have locked elbow joints. Then if you pull back and you, as you roll back, excuse me, if you come way too far outside of your columns, Again, this is not a good position. And then we're back into our pushing chi. So if we try that ward off, let's do that whole thing as a really poor, incorrect movement. Step out, ward off, and then roll back. And 
how long can you do that kind of movement? See, even notice my back heel coming up. I'm not rooted and grounded. Now let's try to apply those principles as we do that ward off and see how your movement actually gets better than when you first tried it. Take a nice deep breath in, stepping out and back, ward off. Grasp the bird's tail. Roll back. Rotate and press. Pushing chi. Bringing the weight over to the right. Bring it back to the left. And stepping out, ward off. Grasp the bird's tail. Roll back. Rotate and press. Pushing chi. So you can feel how keeping your columns intact, keeping yourself rooted and grounded, letting the Dantian lead that movement, allowing the rotation to help you and not overreach and lock joints. All of that helps make that ward off sequence much more relaxing to your body. Wave hands like clouds. Again, like part the wild horse's mane, there is a Goldilocks position for your arms, this rounded position. Let's try wave hands like clouds. Let's do it without stepping first and just do it the way you would normally do it. Let your body relax. And now start to play with it. Start to bring your arms really long. And now just start to use the arms and not the rotation at all. And you can feel that that's obviously not right. Start Try to do it really tight to your body like we did with the part the wild horse's mane. This again does not feel correct. As long as you can open up, keep that nice rounded position and find that Goldilocks position for your wave hands like clouds. And now stepping. Try to feel that substantial and insubstantial change. And now I want you to think about rotating on that central column. If we rotate on that central column, we're going to keep our shoulders level to the ground. Try not rotating on that central column, but let your body just be kind of topsy-turvy and wave hands like clouds. Again, you can feel that this is not relaxing. I mean, it's kind of fun <laughs> for a little while, but you want that rotation on that central column to help your body relax. And again, doing it incorrectly, you can feel when you correct it, feel how much better it is and how uh, brilliant applying those underlying principles, what that really means for your body. Let's try kick, smash, and box the ears. Has balance, has substantial and insubstantial. It has Lowering your center of gravity, thinking about moving from the Dantian to box the ears. You know, the most common mistake in that kick, smash, and box the ears is to fall forward, right? Crash the airplane, as my husband says. If you just practice falling forward like this, it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel uh, relaxing at all. Think about the balance part of it. 
Am I rooted and grounded? Do I have my columns straight? Am I relaxed in my leg enough that my knee can be slightly bent? And yet my shoulders are in harmony with my hips, allowing this kicking leg to become completely insubstantial so that I can lift, kick, smash, now lowering that center of gravity so my heel can touch, moving from the Dantian, come forward. Let's do that to the side. Lift, kick, smash, lowering that center of gravity, moving from the Dantian to box the ears. Let's do one more movement, playing around with it. And a common error that I see, pick the needle up from the sea bottom. Let's start with holding the ball to the left. Step forward with your fair lady works the shuttle. Rocking back, bring your weight up onto that right. Fair lady works the shuttle. Stepping right to left, tap that left toe. Try to keep that left foot as empty as possible. Pick the needle up from the sea bottom, come up block, and fan through the back. With pick the needle up from the sea bottom, if we do it not thinking about our columns, not thinking about our substantial and insubstantial, if we try to actually pick something up from the sea bottom, and I want you to do that because I want you to have that sensation of, I'm actually gonna face plant if I don't put my hand down here. If I actually try to bend over and look down and pick something up from the ground, I'm going to fall. I'm not in a balanced position at all. Whereas now if I think about all my weight on my right leg, leaving my left foot as empty as possible, hinging back with my hips, you go down as far as you can and stay balanced, keeping that sh shoulder line in harmony with the hips, not rounding down like this, keeping that line nice and straight from shoulder to hip, and keeping your eye on your opponent. This is a good pick the needle up from the sea bottom. Don't round down, don't put weight on that left foot. Don't try to pick something up. There's no reason to go that low. Tap that left foot, hinging, pick the needle up, come up block, and then come forward fan through the back. When you play around with doing a movement in a way that you know is really not um, applying the underlying principles at all, and then you go back to trying to apply them, that's when your body realizes, oh, this is what you want me to do. So it's actually good to lose your balance sometimes. It's actually good to make a mistake because your body can learn from it if you take the time to pause, to analyze, to be purposeful in your movement. I have a client here in Denver who he just started taking Tai Chi. He's had three private lessons with me and he started taking Tai Chi because he um, in his words, he goes, I'm in crisis mode. I am not walking well. I am going to fall. I feel terrible every time I'm out. I feel like I need my cane or I'm, I'm toast. He's only had three Tai Chi classes. And he said to me yesterday, he said, I'm walking in such a different way. He said, I'm in my 70s now. He said, I've never walked this way. He says, I'm thinking about being suspended. I'm thinking about feeling the ground. 
thinking about keeping my shoulders up and not allowing myself to be hunched, I'm in charge as I'm walking. And I thought that was a great statement. He says, I don't just mindlessly walk out the door now. I don't just mindlessly walk down the aisle in the grocery store. He said, I am purposeful and I am in charge. So you are in charge of your movement as you do your Tai Chi, as you walk, as you do any of your movement. You are in charge if you take the time to really think about how you're moving.